Welcome, everyone, and thank you for listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. Ricky, how are you today? I am doing amazing, Pete. I'm never are- not doing not amazing. You know that. You're never not doing not amazing. That's a that's a lot of that's a lot of negatives in there. So you're <laughs> always <laughs> you're always doing amazing. I'm always even when I'm not. Ever seen Scarface? I have. It's been a while. Scarface. One of my favorite lines in that movie for the for for, for the kids out there listening who don't know, <laughs> watch that movie. Um, one of my my favorite lines is at the restaurant towards the end when he's like, you know what? You need people like me. I always tell the truth even when I lie. That is one of the best lines I've heard. I love it. That's how sure Tony Montana was. That, that's I like it. I like it. All right, but good. I, I don't know what that got to do with recruiting, but it just came to my mind. Sorry about that. It, it has absolutely nothing to do with recruiting, nothing. but that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. That's okay. So, all right. How so? Your Monday. How's your Monday going so far? It's it's going well, primarily because the weekend went really well. I have my FSU shirt on representing as if I don't have enough FSU stuff in the background already, but um, it's a special day. We just won our first game of the season after an Owen too many to catch yeah, that I want to mention out loud start and it was yeah. parents weekend. So we were there for it. I have a, nice. uh, yeah, my, my daughter's a senior there and my son's a sophomore. So it was a, it was a good weekend, a little too much partying and uh, uh, up at the college campus, but all was well. Yeah. A little bit too much party in Tallahassee. I've never heard such a thing, Pete. Uh, yeah, it was back to my, <laughs> I was acting younger than I should probably, but yeah. that's, that's okay. That's okay. A good time was had by all. I, I will say that. Well, um, I will be there. The, I will be there in November for that Miami FSU game. So I can't wait what, to go back up there. So. Two teams that are not at their peak <laughs> this year <laughs> playing. So yeah, That should be fun. That's okay. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's better than not being there. That's, that's, that's for right. sure. Right. Well, well, cool. So look, there's a lot going on in the world of staffing right now. And one of those things that uh, continues to, we, we continue to hear more about is artificial intelligence. So why don't we talk about that today? Absolutely. Actually, I was looking at the uh, four corners resources website um, over in the blog section, and we actually blogged about it last. What a last coincidence year. that we have a blog. <laughs> what a real big coincidence that came out on it. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that was uh, that was very subtle. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know me, yeah, very subtle kind of guy. Yeah, no, I was looking through it, Pete, and uh, it's uh, you know, I got to tell you, I've been doing this for a while, and um, I am one of those that whenever I see something come out that uh, that it revolutionizes a specific field. In the back of my mind, I can't help not to think that, wait, is this something that's going to take my job as a recruiter? And I'm pretty sure that's on, on, a, on, a, on a lot of people's minds. And I, I would venture to guess, Pete, that every time something like this happens in any field, a lot of people are going to be thinking that same thing. For example, the iPod. When the iPod first came out or the iPhone first came out, people had their music at their palm of their hands. And I'm pretty sure people who who are DJs, people who uh, do weddings, they started thinking, oh, is that going to take over? But it's proven that it hasn't. So I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I just, I, just went, I just went down that rabbit hole as far as the human aspect from a recruiter when it comes to artificial intelligence and recruiting. So we'll, well get to Well, it, yeah, the, there's, of course, truth to the potential for technology to take jo- you know, jobs or replace yeah. jobs. In this case... Yeah, the, the jury is very much out on whether that could ever happen in the world of recruiting. You know, and I don't think, well, I feel very confident that it's not going to happen anytime soon. That, that's for sure. Uh, how prevalent it is you know, in the space right now is, you know, I would say not very. And, and the reason is because I don't think that there's a lot of solutions out there that are truly artificial intelligence. I think there's things that claim to be artificial intelligence, but that, that's vastly different than, um, than what I see as, as um, automation tools. Uh, I, I think there's products and solutions that are based on if-then statements yep. that um, will guide uh, you know, uh, events you know, down a specific path. But 
true artificial intelligence is is something you know, again altogether different. So let's let's talk about the pros and cons of what's available today and okay. see if we can come up with a, a consensus for for what we think um, Perfect. is really going on right now. So so let's start with this, Pete. Um, from now you started this company about 16 years ago, right? So you obviously know what you're doing. So I'll throw this out there for everybody. So um, what are the two things recruiters are measured on? So hiring? First, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, hiring, right? You but, know, can, candidate quality for sure. I'm going to let you answer it because you have something in mind. I think recruiters are measured on many more than two things but but go go on and well, uh, and well main things i mean obviously hiring right but it's they can't take too long in hiring that one perfect person because business still needs to to continue and the job still needs to be done so in my experience the two things that that uh, recruiters are held accountable to is time to fill a position and the quality of the hire they have in that position sure okay. And um, when it's without any artificial intelligence, without any type of apps or any algorithms to help a recruiter out, um, a lot of people think, and, and this is in my previous life, uh, Pete, a lot of people think, especially a business partner, that when it's time to bring somebody into, uh, into, the, uh, into the organization, that the recruiter has all this time in the world to review one resume. Right. They think they got hours and hours and look at a resume to make sure we got the right person. And of course, that's a fallacy right? <laughs> because normally nine times out of 10, when I was a recruiter around 10 years ago, somebody gave me a call telling me that somebody retired two two months ago. I never knew about it. And they need me to find somebody for them today. Not yesterday, not in a week from that today. I don't have a job description. So anyway, you times that by, I don't know five, six, seven, even 10 other business partners, the recruiter's job can be really challenging at that point. I mean, have you seen something like that? Yeah, except you're, what you're describing is corporate recruiting, right? Correct. When, you, when Correct. you're talking about yeah. business partners, you know, that, that is, you know, you, you come from the corporate world of, of that, where, you know, now that you're in the staffing world, um, you know, time and speed are always a factor, a huge factor in what we're doing. And I would say significantly more so than, it, than even in the corporate world, right? So where you, you know, didn't have time then, we have even less, I think, on, on the staffing side. Mm. Because what we do is, is, is competitive. You know, when you're the home team, as you are as a corporate recruiter, um, yeah, you, you, you sort of have an exclusive situation you know, at the end of the day where for us, we're replaceable. Um, yeah, we, we, we're, we're, we have to earn our keep, you know, at every step of the way. So I, I know this is off topic, but I, I do think about that, um, you know, from time to time that time is, is, is measured relatively depending on your perspective, you, depending on your situation, and you know, for us, it is always at the forefront of, of what we do, as is quality. So to bringing this back to your point, you know, speed and inefficiency, while relative, are necessary in every recruiting scenario, as is quality, right? The, 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 you know, the, the, you ha it has to be there. And so um, I agree with you that those two things, if you were only counting two, that those would, would be it, yes. Well, so it's it's as as time continues on and technology evolves, more more programs, more artificial intelligence comes to the limelight to kind of help people to be more efficient. And it keeps getting more and more and more and more efficient. Even when you get to the point that when a new program comes out, as soon as you finally watch hours of YouTube videos to, to for you to figure out how it works, it's already outdated. A new one already came out. It keeps evolving. But it's happening with recruiting right now because what artificial intelligence does in the recruiting world, specifically for recruiting right now, is that it helps on that first aspect of where a recruiter um, is measured on, which is time to fill. So what does what what is artificial intelligence and what does it do into the in the recruiting space? So I, I'll go first if that's okay, Pete. Sure. Uh, so um, what it does well, from what I have seen, it it automates a lot of those little tiny intricacies that a recruiter has to do to make sure that he or she has the right person on deck to be interviewed, 
right? So artificial intelligence comes in. It, it ex exactly how you said it is an algorithm. It is geometry, um, where if this if X happens, then you do Y, right? If you don't have one part of the variable, the other one does not work. Like anything um, uh, uh, technology driven, you have to have that kind of an algorithm. AI for recruiting is no different, right? If you're looking for a specific skill set um, and somebody puts in a, a resume, you want to look for specific words and specific areas um, of, of expertise that actually pops it up. They can bring it to the screen of a recruiter in a matter of seconds, whereas in the absence of that technology, it might take quite some time to go through a lot of resumes to get that in a few seconds. So from a time perspective, I get that. I really do get it. Have you seen that before? Yeah, yeah, of course. So yeah, the, yeah the, there is a, a time saving, you know, and we, we can call it AI, right? But, but you know, if I keep calling it automation, that, um, and that, you know, you, you just look at our own internal database of four corner resources, we have um, somewhere around half a million resumes in our database, we, we have to pull them out somehow. So we, we use keywords, we use, you know, technology to, to, to draw those out. Um, similarly, if you go to LinkedIn or Indeed or any of the online job boards to try to pull resumes down from there and to isolate your, your, your candidate pool, right? You want to narrow your, your search. Uh, then yes, of course you, you want to use those, those tools that are available and um, that, you know, there, there's a time saving, you know, for sure. I think the, the AI claim that's made by some of the vendors out there is that you, you put in these words that you, you, you define your criteria, if you will, and that they, that their tool will go out into, um, you know, the world of the internet or specific job boards and be intelligent enough to pull in only the candidates you want. And that, that's where I would say it's better than nothing uh, for sure, yeah. but it's, it's, it's not quite as intelligent as you, you would think because it's just identifying words on a resume, which can be, you know, you know placed there without, you um, yeah, necessarily accuracy yeah. in terms of the skill set or the qualifications of the individual, and so it, it's an yes, it, 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 but it's it's a they save time and they do create efficiency in the process for sure, and it cuts out on biases as well, right? Whereas the human eye um, has well, actually, not just the human eye, just a human in general, right? It, it, it's all humans in general have some kind of a bias, whether it's good or bad, right? What makes it bad is whether we act on them or not, right? And and some of those biases are are um, unintentional or, God, what's the word I'm looking for? Unconscious? Unconscious bias. Yes. Thank you, sir. Sure. Yeah. So, sure. you know, it, a lot of those biases are unconscious bias. And it, it, it's, look, I'm no, I'm no doctor and I don't claim to be a doctor or any kind of a scientist for that matter. So um, uh, I'm stepping out on a limb here to say that the human brain will have a hard time competing with any kind of an algorithm to make sure they select a specific person and not have that many biases, right? Because the, the human eye, the, the human brain has a tendency to, to relate to people that they like that are people that are like them, right? Now, I have studied that. So, and, and that's how you turn an unconscious bias into a conscious one if you know that. And you have to really understand that piece to make sure that you're not using that bias to make a selection. Where AI comes in, it eliminates that. So from a legal perspective, and again, I'm not a lawyer neither. There's a lot of things I'm not, Pete. Right? So, <laughs> so from, a, from a legal perspective, I can understand how this would be something... It, that this would make any legal department in any large organization extremely happy because it, um, if, in case they get challenged, they can say, look, our recruiter isn't the one that's discriminatory. I guess it's our, <laughs> our software, if that's the case, right? So well, depending if, on what, what the software is programmed to do, true. Right? That, that could be true. good or bad. So Amazon and, and you know, a few years ago, I, I know had a, um, a tool that they were using for this very purpose. And they found that it was biased. Um, it was favorable towards men. And mm -hmm. it, it was looking for people. I, I'm, yeah, 
don't quote me on this exactly, but I believe what 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 the they found was that they wanted to find people in the IT space who had uh, more experience versus less, which would make sense. And because men, you know, are there are more men in, in IT, then it was slanted towards men. So it was a self you know, perpetuating, you know, situation, I believe, where um, it was biased against women, which was not the intention of, of Amazon, of course. It was just the way the, the, te- the program was working. And so they, they, they stopped it. But, you know, the, you know, the software is only going to be going to be as good as what was pro- it was programmed to be. Yeah. And that's where, you know, as a, as a professional recruiter, which is you know, to say someone whose product is a person, right? I mean, that's what you know, a, a, a recruiter you know, has, right? As their product, it, it really. And so you, unlike a, you know, a, a t-shirt, if you're, if you're selling, you know, shirts, right? The, the shirt is just the shirt, right? It's, yeah. it, it gets contained, you know, it's the size, it's the material, it's the quality of the stitching, whatever it might be, the color, but, you know, you, you can't replicate a person. You, you can't, um, you know, what, there's so many, there's limitless variables when it comes to individuals. So to rely on a machine, right, or a computer program to make assessments of, of a person beyond what's on a resume, right? You can identify words on a resume. That's the cover of a book. And I've probably said that before on this podcast. That's all it is. You know, that that I can't make any determination on the individual whose resume it is based on the resume itself. I can pick it out of a pile based on the frequency of words that are used on it, a degree, a certification, you know, a past employer, whatever it might be. But that that's it. So it's very surface level um, information that I can gather that way, which which it to me does nothing more than just. You know, give, give you, you know, you know, it thins the pile that you need to look through at, at best. And, 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 and this is why um, I'm, I'm, I'm in this position where I'm, I'm comfortable in saying that I like the AI function in the recruiting world, but only as a tool, only as a tool um, and not as a, as a deciding factor. Right. So because, yes, it is a tool that can help a recruiter do his or her job a lot faster, more efficient, better quality. But exactly how you said it's a book. So from 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 what I'm reading and from what I have seen in the past, AI shows you great books that you might like. But it's up to you to actually read the book, take a deeper dive into that book to see if you actually would like that book. Right. Because. The book gets presented to you based on information that the system knows about you, right? Just to make sure that that uh, based on that data being put in there, um, uh, they they are presented to you. So that's why I like the combination of artificial intelligence with a skilled recruiter, because a skilled recruiter is able to take this AI function and use it to his or her advantage to make sure we got the right person at the right time way faster than had AI not existed, but it cannot be a deciding factor. It's got to be a tool. Another great example, Pete, um, is, you know, because AI can actually, um, in recruiting, can look at a resume. If you're saying, I want somebody that has a master's degree and a PhD. Yeah, AI can find that for you. Look, this person has a PhD from Cornell or a PhD from MIT or whatever. Fine. But all an education is, is that this person has the tools to perform the job. It's not until you get to the interview and you select that person to bring them in when you find out if they, or what, how they're using that skill set they learn in school. And a, I don't think AI can capture that, right? That's when you need that skilled recruiter to make sure they ask the right question from a human perspective to make sure we get the right person for the role. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it's, there's, it's a tool. Right, uh, like any like any tool, it, it needs to be used for you know, the right tool needs to be used for the right job. Uh, but the person using the tool, the the person, right, the human yeah. using the tool is going to make the difference ultimately on how effective you know the tool can be applied. So, I I, I think we're we're on the same page there um, that it it's it's helpful. 
<laughs> right? But it's not, it's not a, it's not, it, it's not the end of, um, of the recruiting profession, you know, by far. Now, can it ever be, right? That, that's what we started talking about at the beginning of, of, of this episode. Do we see a path where that could ultimately happen, do you think? You know what? Technology evolves, and technology has, be, has been evolving forever, right? As soon as uh, somebody invented the wheel, that's technology. It's just prehistoric technology. What happens is, is that as technology evolves, how much time it takes for it to evolve it gets shorter and shorter and shorter, right? right? So for me to say, based on previous history, that it may not happen, I think that it's a, it's a little bit short-sighted um, from, from my part. But Pete, I never thought we would, we, we would ever live in a world where you could just hit cruise control or whatever control on an, a fully electric car and it takes you from point A to point B without you ever touching the wheel or anything like that. And, and we have that today. Now, of course, I'm talking about Tesla, uh, you know, Tesla, right? But even then, because I've been in one before, if you do that, it kind of tells you, you still got to pay attention, right? Because at the end of the day, this thing makes mistakes, <laughs> right? So we're in a world where we have autonomous vehicles. So I don't know, man, I really think it's going to come a time from my perspective, it's just me, me being worried that, yeah, I really think in about 10, 15 years, there could be a fully functional Android type of a recruiter. Skynet, man, is happening. I'm yeah, telling I'm, you. <laughs> so I'm going to reject that idea. Okay. It, 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 <laughs> Got it. it. Again, because, you know, the, you know, with the, the, the car scenario, there is ultimately a finite number of decisions that you're looking for that car to make. Yeah. Um, you know, what's, what's, what's what's near it, what's in front of it, what's, you know, speed. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's, it's impressive technology. There's no doubt about it. And I look forward to the day when we can drive and just sit back and, and not have to do any of the work. Uh, that, that'll, be yeah. <laughs> yeah. that'll be great. That'll be great. And I've driven, you know, it, it, you know, it exists now, right? It, it's there. But I will go back to what I said earlier. People are are vastly different than than anything else you could you could be talking about, and I want you. Know, I'm I'm not going to trust that things like tone and drive and motivation and um, you know how agreeable someone is, how you know friendly someone is. Uh, th those are things that I. I don't know that I want to live in the world where the computer, you know, where, where you know, a machine is assessing those things for us. Now, can it happen? Sure, in theory, but I don't, it, it, I, I don't know how that I would ever want to put my faith and trust it in, in, in a computer making decisions about, you know, you know, so soft skills and, and, and personality traits. Cause look at it this way. Now you may as well let your, the computer pick out your spouse, right? <laughs> if that's the case, because why, why, why not? If, I mean, the same things would apply, right? I mean, not that, you know, having you know, a life partner is the same as, as hiring an employee and, or an employee choosing to be hired, but it's probably the next closest thing if you think would, about it. Would that exist today though, right? I mean, aren't there apps that if you swipe one way or another, that means they match somebody to you? Like, you know, one of those dating sites, I, obviously at the end of the day, you have the ultimate deciding factor whether you want to go out with that person or not. And of but course, yeah, it's yes, I mean, <laughs> but but that's a, that's a big gap that you, yeah. you can't just be dismissive of, you know, yeah. you get to choose, um, you know, wh whether to swipe or, or not, whatever that is. I mean, no different than here's, a, here's what's on the menu, pick what you want. The restaurant is determining that, you know, based on, Whatever criteria they've applied, this is what's going to be on their menu, right? What's availability, what's available for you know, for food in their in their local market? What the cuisine, you know, is going to be. And we're way off topic with this, but um, <laughs> no. But you know what? But hold on, Pete. You you. I don't know if you meant to do this or not, but you just gave an amazing example of why AI and a recruit a live recruiter should work together, right? And and and, and that's what's crucial that why that partnership is there. 
Because exactly how you said, they give you all the options. You have the ultimate deciding factor on who you want to go with based on what the options in front of you. They don't check it for you. Same thing with AI for recruiting. Based on the parameters you put in place into the system, they show it to you. But at the end of the day, that skilled human recruiter, I can't believe I have to say human in there, that skilled recruiter is the one who makes a selection to move forward. So yes, I, I think you're making an awesome case on how both of those um, 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 worlds can work well together. Yeah, I mean, I, so I would, I think the way recruiting is done, and this this is not for today, where it's because it's too lengthy of a conversation, but the, the resume itself is somewhat antiquated. It, it hasn't really evolved much in many decades. Job descriptions, same thing. They don't necessarily represent how hiring is done when it's done right. Because at Four Corner, and we're not the only ones who do this, but I think we're the leader in doing this. We look beyond the job description and want to have an actual conversation with the human who's doing the hiring and is going to be managing those individuals individuals uh, to say, tell me who you want. You, to, you know, Describe what the right fit is based on your, of course, the skill set that's needed and experience and background that's needed, but also the, the soft skills where I think that's what makes a difference between a successful hire and, and one that's not. And we take the same approach with candidates. Tell me you know, what kind of opportunity you want. What's important to you in that opportunity for your life? Not yet. Yes, it's your career. But if you think about it, that, that's just a part of the bigger picture of this is what matters to, to in your life from, you know, the, are you in the office? Or are you working at home? What's your commute like? What are your hours? What's yeah. the environment that you're going to be working in? What are the growth opportunities? What's the compensation? So all of those things aren't really to be found on either a job description or a resume. And yeah. so that to me, as much as anything else, where I see a big failure in, in relying on, you know, I'll, I'll even say AI, I, I don't want to call it that because I will still contend that it's not really artificial and it's not intelligent. It's just, it's just a program that's being applied in, in what's commonly available on the market today. So I, I kind of reject that it's more than just a way to screen and, and sort through resumes efficiently to let the humans do their work. And you know, if you timestamp this and look in 30 years and say, wow, you really sound foolish now, <laughs> maybe, right. Maybe, but um like I said, I, I don't think I want to live in that world um, <laughs> yeah, where, where, where you know, machines are matching us up, you know, for anything um, that's, that's important. And that's certainly what we're talking about here. Something very important. I agree with you there. I don't think I, I ever want to live in that world neither. Um, it, it, it's, but you know, it, it's, we just have to make sure that as, as a recruiter, we just have to make sure that um, we still, use the tools that are there, but we have the ultimate deciding factor, right? And we have to make sure that we still, um, from, a, from, a, from a staffing perspective, that we do what's best for our clients, which we do. From a corporate perspective, we do what's best for our business partners, which, which people do. And you know what, Pete? We do something here at Four Corner Resources that I wish I would have known in corporate America. And um, one of the things that I wish I would have known back then is what we do as far as uh, building a profile for a candidate, right? Reaching out, talking to a candidate, not have any 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 specific job in mind, but we know those skill sets are hot. Let's make sure we build that profile and we build that ourselves by actually going out and calling people, right? Um, we don't do that in corporate America, right? Because in corporate America is we need a requisition, uh, a a, a, a position, we open up a rec, we got to go find that person. And what we do here, we actively are looking for skill sets that we don't need right now, but we're going to lead later on. But you build that relationship, the human to human relationship that I don't think AI is ever going to replicate later on. I don't think that's ever going to happen from an AI perspective. No, it, especially when you're trying, what you're describing is you're, you're, you're trying to fit the, 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 the person, you know, the resume, right? It's not a, even a person at that point at that point into the job opening. 
where we try to we really reject that way of matching we want the candidate to tell us as much as they can about what what is they want before we introduce this specific job because everything's going to be skewed talk about bias right yeah. if i tell you this is the only job i have and then I ask you if you're interested in that job and you, you need a job, you're you going to, right? <laughs> yeah, your, your, your answers are not going to be, uh, uh, they're not going to be pure. And so we, we don't want to taint the situation um, anymore, period. We don't want to taint you know, what, what comes next. So that, that is uh, something that you're right. Corporate you know, recruiting generally doesn't have the luxury of, of doing because it's really not, you know, it's just a piece of the overall corporate structure where in our world, that, that is all we do. Yeah. So you know, back to our candidates being our product. Yeah. We better make sure we're doing the best that we possibly can, um, you know, to take care of them and to represent them in the best possible way. So that means taking that, those extra steps that, you know, it's just not practical in the corporate world. And then that's, that's, that's the purpose we serve. So that's why, that's why we exist. Um, so from yeah, an that's... AI perspective, so what we're saying, I think you and I are, are in agreement here, Pete, is that, yeah, it's good to have that extra set of hands, but at the end of the day, the human being is king. The human being still needs to make a, a decision on other factors that you just can't replicate from a machine or a computer to make sure this is the right person for that right role. I mean, Without that's what question. I'm hearing. Without question. So we'll, yep. we'll come back in a few years, see if we can, <laughs> if we are still there. Um, I think we will be at least for, for, for many years to come. Look, I, I really hope this relationship keeps going, Pete, but let me tell you, man, if I'm still here in 30 years, I'm going to pull this video back up. I'm going to put this podcast back up. I'm like, you remember when you said this? Yeah. Uh-huh. Look at that. Now, now, now they're telling us what to do. Um, I go to McDonald's and they're just giving me my order. Just based on what I ordered before. No, don't even give me the opportunity to choose. So that's yeah, I don't think there's, a, uh, there's not a single story where the, the robots take over and it ends well for humans. Right. So, <laughs> <No, it's not. laughs> so hopefully we cut it off before it gets there. And uh, so I, I hope so. And speaking of, of cutting off, let, let's cut this today. I think we, we've, 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 we've gotten to, to where, um, you know, we're, we're going to land, which is good to use technology, yep. of course, take advantage of the automation tools that exist today and in even the ones that claim to be AI, but but don't rely on them to, right. to do the job of, of the recruiter um, no time soon. That's right. And folks, obviously, you know, it, it's uh, we're, we're in that space, right? AI is not going to take over. We still got human recruiters. So if you are somebody who needs top notch recruiting services, if you want to find the right person for the right role, come find us. We are at fourcornerresources.com where you can call us 407-872-1521. Or if you have any, any topic you want us to hear, any questions you want to hear on the show, higher calling at uh, fourcornerresources.com. Give us a like in your favorite uh, podcast platform. We are everywhere. Every, just look for Four Corner Resources. Uh, actually, no, excuse me. Uh, just look for um, the Higher Calling Podcast. Go ahead and download us. Give us a like. Let us know how you feel about the show or any topics you want to see. We would greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, folks. Have a good one. Drive safe and good night.